Willis MB Pedal Shaft Assembly. Let's begin by looking at the bracket that's mounted to the frame on the 43 Willis MB. If you notice here, I've cleaned out all the paint from the inside of the tube, and I've also checked to make sure that it's not been oblonged. I've primed and painted the shaft for the pedals with Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts Red Oxide Primer and OD Green Paint. The part number for the shaft is A495. This is a very high quality made part. I'm going to be installing the shaft from the inside rail of the frame, so I'll have to loosen up the stay cable just a little bit so I'll have enough room to get the shaft inside the bracket on the frame. I'll simply use a ratchet and a socket to loosen the nut on the back side of the stay cable and give myself just a little bit of room so I can get the shaft in the inside of the bracket. You don't have to remove the stay cable, you'll have to loosen it up probably like a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. Before installing the shaft, I'll lubricate the outside edge of the inside of the bracket, or the longer side of the shaft, with a HP grease. It's a lithium base. This stuff is fantastic and it has a really nice sticking quality and adheres to the metal very well. Once I've got a pretty decent coat as shown here on the whole outside of the shaft, you don't have to go to the very end, just about two thirds up the way of the shaft. We'll go back to the bracket on the frame and install the same HP grease throughout the whole inside of the tube. The grease I'm using comes in a tube that fits in a grease gun, so after I get the whole assembly together, I'll be able to use it also to thoroughly grease all the parts over again. Insert the shaft into the bracket and rotate the shaft back and forth slowly. Take your time here. You don't want to force out the grease that you've applied to both the bracket and the shaft. Just gently turn and in and out and you should be able to keep most of the grease on the moving parts. I'm working from the inside of the frame rail and I'll show you the outside here where the shaft should come out on the outside of the frame. Again, back and forth until it's all lubed up. You see how nice and smooth this turns. It's fantastic. Orient the shaft so the slot for the Woodruff key is facing straight up, and then install one washer, part number A498, onto the shaft and slide it on next to the bracket. Next, we'll be installing the Woodruff key onto the shaft. The key part number is 5036. Insert the key into the slot on the shaft and use a soft face mallet or similar to tap the key into place. Make sure you keep the key square as the clutch pedal shaft assembly will be sliding on and secured by this key onto the shaft. Make sure the key is bottomed out into the slot on the shaft and double check to make sure it's square. Next, install the clutch pedal arm. Notice here I've removed all the paint from the inside of the arm, paying close attention to the slot where the Woodruff key will slide in. This will make it really easy to install the arm and you won't have to force it. Line up the Woodruff key with the slot on the arm and simply tap the pedal onto the shaft. Notice the bend in the arm is facing rearward towards the cross member or the back of the Jeep. Then we can install the second washer and then we can install the cotter pin. The cotter pin is inserted into the two pre-drilled holes on the shaft. Once the pin is installed, you can use a set of needle nose pliers or similar to bend the legs both backwards and forwards onto the shaft. Try to get them as tightly as you can to the shaft because you don't want them hanging up on anything or dragging. In fact, I'm going to use a pair of slip joint pliers to go ahead and get these really nice and lined up and tight against the shaft. In a previous Team G503 video I did, I actually installed the master brake cylinder and I installed the tie bar as well as the plunger rod onto them so you could see very clearly how they go. Now I'm going to have to remove the small bolt from the front side of the tie bar and then I'm going to have to remove the larger bolt from the tie bar that goes through the frame. I'm simply going to slide down or turn down the master cylinder in order for me to complete the process of assembling and tying all these pieces together on the pedal shaft. On the long bolt towards the rear that fastens through the frame, remove the nut from the inside of the frame and then slide the bolt out a little bit and drop it down past the bell housing in order to clear the bolt outside and remove the tie bar and the bolt from the master cylinder. The long bolt that is inserted from the outside of the frame and into the threaded side of the master cylinder remains and just allow your master cylinder to sit there for the time being. This is all going to make sense in a few minutes here as we reassemble this whole assembly. Let's go back to the inside rail of the frame and the pedal shaft and install a cotter pin on the pre-drilled holes towards the inside of the shaft. Bend the legs of the cotter pin the same way we did on the outside. Then we can install another washer, which is still part number 498. All three washers are the same. Install the washer onto the shaft next to the cotter pin. 
This part of the shaft is where the brake pedal rides, so we'll go ahead with our HP grease and lube this up the same way we did the inside of the shaft at the beginning of the video. This will make for smooth operation of the brake pedal. Let's take a close look at the brake pedal itself. You notice I've cleaned the pin out of the inside. And the big difference is there's a greasable nipple or zerk at the end. And then if you turn the brake pedal over, you'll see this stud with a drilled hole in it. This brake pedal is inserted onto the shaft in this manner with the stud facing towards you or towards the inside of the frame rail. I've removed all the paint and primer from the inside of the brake pedal. And I'll apply a thin film of the HP grease on the inside all the way around. With the larger portion of the lower part of the brake pedal facing towards you or the inside of the rail, as well as this stud facing towards the inside of the rail, install the brake pedal onto the shaft using that back and forth motion to ensure you get a nice coating of the grease on all the internal moving parts. Now we're going to tie everything back together. We're going to tie the pedal, we're going to tie the master cylinder, and the shaft all together with, you guessed it, the tie bar. To do so, we'll move the brake pedal arm backwards so we can see the drilled hole at the end of the shaft. Then we'll take our tie bar that we removed and we'll install it back into place and everything will be secured by this bar. Drop down below the bell housing and install the longer of the two bolts we removed through the top or middle hole in the tie bar. You have to install this bolt below the bell housing or you won't be able to install it. Leave yourself a little room with the bolt and bring the whole assembly up and then connect the back side of the tie bar to the pedal shaft as shown here. While you finish installing the longer bolt, make sure that does not pop off the shaft on the rear end. Install the bolt through the bracket that's on the frame and then install the lock washer and the nut from the inside of the frame rail. Before installing the small bolt into the master cylinder, you'll have to raise the heat shield back up and install the bracket or leg on the outside of the tie bar as shown here. For reference, there are two Team G503 videos highlighting the installation of the master cylinder and the master cylinder heat shield. This is the video where it all comes together. If you need to, you can go back and watch those two short videos as a reference to where we're at now. I'll install the cotter pin now into the pedal shaft on the outside of the tie bar. Secure the cotter pin in the same way we did the first two. Next, we'll be installing the master cylinder brake plunger assembly. I've primed and painted the exposed end and I've wire wheeled and cleaned the opposite that'll go inside the boot on the brake master cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead here and just apply a little bit of the HP grease to the pin or the stud and just a dab to the small ball end of the plunger. I'll give the connecting end a little dab as well. Install the eye of the plunger over the stud on the brake pedal arm assembly. Install the plunger rod end into the rubber boot that protects the master cylinder backside and simply push it forward and squeeze a little bit on the boot until the boot hooks into its location on the plunger rod as shown here. Install a small collar key into the pre-drilled hole on the stud on the brake lever arm. Then secure the legs back in the same way we've been doing all the cotter pins with a pair of needle nose pliers. Make sure that it doesn't hang up on any of the mechanism. Next is to install the rod that connects the pedal shaft assembly to the lever assembly towards the rear of the Jeep. I'll show you where the small cotter pins are inserted right now because once I get the rod installed in its location, it will be kind of difficult to see. I'm going to apply a little dab of the HP grease onto each end of the rod these are high wear areas and a little lubrication is going to help. This particular brand of HP grease also has an anti-seize quality to it. While I'm finishing up applying the lube here, I'll remind you we have a Team G503 video showing the entire lever assembly and it's called part number one of the whole pedal assembly. Install the rod into the holes on the lobes of the lever assembly and the pedal shaft assembly as shown. The open end goes towards the inside of the frame rail. We can now install the two small cotter pins. Install a cotter pin on the front side of the rod first. As I showed you earlier in the video how it goes into the hole in the slot, this is a little difficult to film in such a tight spot to work. Then go back to the lever arm assembly and install a cotter pin in the same fashion. We'll take a pair of needle nose pliers and take the ears or the legs of the cotter pin up on each side of the rod and fasten it securely. Make sure the ears of the cotter pin don't drag up on any part of the mechanism. Go back to the front pin now and fashion it in the same way. Using two wrenches, tighten the bolt that's on the lower part of the clutch arm. I tightened this bolt last just to make sure that there was no issues on the assembly because if I had to take it apart, if there was an issue, then I'd have to unbolt the whole thing and respread the bottom side of, of the arm. 
To install the pedals, we'll have to remove the bolt that's threaded into the top side of both the clutch and the brake arm. To remove the bolt, just use a wrench and unthread it and unscrew it from the top side. Before I primed and painted the lever arms, I opened up the ends with a screwdriver and I also didn't tighten the bolt fully down. The pedals I'll be installing are new reproduction pedals that are cast and they're exactly like the originals. These are available at Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. You can look here and see the detail that went into these reproductions and I'm really excited about installing them. A lot of times the nubs and the other areas are wore off on original pedals so these are really a nice way to put back an original look. I have a pedal seal kit as shown here. This one is felt and we've got a spring and then we've got a large flat washer. The kit that you need to install the pedals comes with two of each of these. I'll be installing the felt seal onto the bottom of the shaft of the pedal first. You simply slide it on to the bottom side of the pedal. After we put the felt seal on, then we'll install the flat washer and that just slips on. And lastly, the spring and put the large end of the spring towards the washer. I'm going to be installing the clutch pedal first, so I want to show you this lip here. That lip is going to be facing the passenger side of the vehicle. The shaft of the pedal should fit snugly into the arm assembly, and you want to line up that notch inside that hole so the bolt will easily go back inside. These pedals have two notches in the shaft. I'm using the first notch and lining it up with my bolt, and then I'm going to reinstall my bolt. I'm not going to fully tighten the bolt at this point because these will have to be removed when I install the tub. I do, however, intend on driving this chassis, so I'll give the bolt a couple turns of the wrench just to ensure that it won't come out when I do the test drive on the chassis. I'll show you how these seals work. If you can imagine the floorboard of the tub would be right here and your openings for your clutch and brake pedal would come through, that felt will seal that hole and is held against the tub by the two springs. We'll repeat the same installation process with the brake pedal on the opposite arm, with the only exception being is, is that the lip on that pedal will face towards the driver's side as you see here. Once again, both these pedals will have to be removed when I install the tub, so I've got my two springs that fasten them and hold them in place here hanging on the frame for when I do that. The felt seals look fantastic. I've gone back through and touched everything up with paint, and I'm really happy with the way this all turned out. The last thing to do is do not forget to go back and re-tighten up your stay cable, and as you see here, I actually ordered a pal nut just to be safe and secure and installed that as well. Thank you to Ron Fitzpatrick and Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts. If you'd like to follow along what we're doing here with the 1943 Willis MB, you can subscribe to us at Team G503 on YouTube. Until next time, keep it safe and happy Jeeping.